Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another episode of Primetime Sports. Marcus and Homer here. Both men and women's basketball teams went up against UL Monroe this week. We will tell you the ending scores and show you some of the highlights. A lot of highlights to show, too. Both teams are going to be in New Orleans for the Sun Belt Championship. New Orleans. Yeah, Voodoo. guess what? The baseball team is going to host EMU. <laughs> you mean EMU? Oh, duh. Come on, Marcus. <laughs> it's been a rough couple, rough couple of eight weeks for us, but it's going to be a series of domination. Let's get right to it. Well, as only he can do it, Ryan Harrell led the Panthers to a whopping 31 points to lead the Panthers to a guaranteed top two finish in the Sun Belt Championship. Harrell finished 11 of 20 from the floor and knocked down a whopping seven three-pointers. Oh my God. Coach Ryan Hunter had to say this about the team. I am so proud of them. It is really tough to win on the road and even though we lost an early lead, we stayed within ourselves and took advantage of the opportunity. But let's not forget the women's basketball team either. They are certainly making us proud this season as they claimed a berth into New Orleans in the 18 Sunbelt Conference Championship. And guess what? They did it with the win over UL Monroe last night, winning 66 to 61. Primetime sports reporter Jared Oliver has more to say about these two games. With the three-way tie at the top of the Sun Belt rankings, Georgia State, Georgia Southern, and UL Monroe are all 13-5 and five in conference play. Ron Hunter told me that it wasn't important that they got the number one seed, but that they get the bye week. And he thought that's, that's what would make the difference in this season and last year is what was significant as well. Georgia State took care of Mission 1, beating UL Monroe, just squeezing by 58-50 to 50 in a game that they didn't necessarily play their best. Ryan Harrell had a 31-point game that he had seven three-pointers and was basically unstoppable. The key in this game was Curtis Washington, the 6'10 forward, having nine points and seven critical rebounds in this game as well. RJ Hunter had one of those few games where he didn't perform his best, but he also contributed in different ways, having nine assists and six good rebounds. Ron Hunter thought that this game should have been over earlier than what it was, but their inability to hit free throws was a key factor. They were uh, um, they were barely 53% from the free throw line going 9 of 17. Of course, they played Georgia Southern here, in-state rival, coming up the next game. It will be high electricity and high volume and just bragging rights for in the state. And also, let's not forget our Lady Panthers also clinching a playoff a tournament berth in the Sunbelt Conference as well. McKeever Ponder went 5 of 7 behind the three-point line, finishing with 17 point, 15 points, excuse me, and also Alicia Andrews having a career-high 13 assists. This is Jared Oliver, Atlanta, Georgia, Primetime Sports. The Georgia State softball, man, are they turning heads. They've already won 10 straight games so far, which ties for the second longest streak in program history. The 13-2 Panthers will look to tie and break the record at home in this team's first Sun Belt Series against Troy. Georgia State and Troy will play in a doubleheader on Saturday and a single game on Sunday as they look to keep the streak alive. In a game with only 27 outs, 9 innings, and 2 teams, one man can be the change to propel a team to victory. So far this season, Matt Rose has been that guy. Let's get over to Rashad Milligan for more on the details. Yes, well, despite falling this past week in Athens to UGA Bulldogs 4-2, the GSU baseball team has got off to a winning start in 2015 with a plethora of standouts on the team. A man among boys really has been preseason All-American Mark Rose. He's a guy who was a conference player of the week a couple weeks ago and also has led the nation in home runs for majority of 2015. I got the opportunity this past week to speak to Mark Rose. Let's check it out and see how he feels about everything. Play ball! All right, Primetime Sports here. I'm Rashad Milligan. I'm here with the man himself, the legend, Matt Rose. Matt, how you doing, man? Good, how are you? Good, good. Uh, now, did you ever grow up, like, dreaming of leading the nation in home runs? No, I grew up. You know, I've wanted to play baseball my whole life, so I think it's just an honor to lead the nation right now and hopefully I continue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, which one do you prefer more? Do you prefer to get a save or hit another home run? It's tough. I mean, getting a save is always good because, you know, you secure the win for your team, but um, hitting home runs are it's a better feeling. I think it's the hardest thing to do in baseball, so I'll just say hitting a home run. Okay, all right, hitting the home run. Cheeks deep, the long yeah. ball. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys are now third in the conference, seven and four, great start to the season. Um, what do you think has been the key so far? Uh, our defense, I think, is 
been playing really well. Our pitching has been superb, so hopefully we continue to play good defense and win baseball games. Okay, and um, did the team have any goals going into the season, like any like benchmarks, actual benchmarks, or just was it more general? I think we want to start off the season playing good baseball, you know, having four weekends to play until we go to conference, we want to get ready for conference so um, we can get ready and hopefully make the conference tournament this year. Okay, and did you have any personal goals for you? Um, you know, I wanted to be around where I were last year, maybe hit a little more home runs or have a higher batting average, but I think I just want to play better baseball, you know, try to help my teammates get better and just try to win. Cool, cool. And um, my last question is a question I always like to ask here at primetime. What's your favorite dance? Ugh. I'm not a dancer, but um, I like watching people do the whip. The whip? Uh, <laughs> you want to hit it for us right now? I can't do it. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right, Matt Rose, his favorite dance is the whip. Um, Preseason All-American, Sun Belt Player of the Week a couple weeks ago. Uh, leader of the nation for home runs. He's also a pitcher. He does it all on the field. His favorite dance is the whip. Like I said, primetime sports. I'm Rashad Milligan. We're out. Three years ago, the GSU Sand Volleyball team was formed, and they've been reaching new heights ever since. This Tuesday, the Panthers earned their highest preseason rankings by coming in at number 10 on the American Volleyball Coaches Association poll. That means we expect big things from them this season. Head coach Beth Van Fleet is excited to be recognized as one of the top teams in the, in the land. During their 14-5 campaign last season, they were able to repeatedly crack the top 10. LaPorsche Wells earned top honors from the Sun Bowl Conference for indoor track and field. The 6'9 sophomore is a former state champion shot putter. She and her teammates together have broken multiple school records this winter. Wells has the second longest shot in the Sun Belt this winter and the 29th best throw in the NCAA. It's a sad day in college basketball. The end of the season has came. But what the end of the season means March Madness is here. Conference championships, the NCAA tournament, basketball, basketball, basketball. So let's get started. Jared Oliver is here, and we're going to talk about the, our prediction for the ACC tournament, the Big 12 tournament, the Big 10 tournament, the SEC tournament, and the Sun Belt. Jared, who do you have winning the ACC tournament? The ACC, I'm going to go with Duke. Uh, Virginia is a great defensive team. Um, offensively, I don't think they're up to par. They're going to compete with Duke or maybe keep up. Uh, defensively, they're one of the best teams in the country by far, but offensively, they're a little slow, and I expect Duke to win about maybe 15 plus. You're going with Duke? Well, I'm going to go with the powerhouse right now, the number two team in the country. I got to give it to Virginia. Virginia has been playing outstanding basketball, and Gill is shooting lights out right now, and Anderson is coming back. In the next conference, who do you have winning the Big 12? In the Big 12, I'm going I'm to go with the Kansas Jayhawks. Um, you know, as of late, they had a couple games that they let slip away, but the Kansas Jayhawks have great offensive rebounding. Um, they have great guards, as they, as they always had uh, in the past. I'm going to go with Kansas. Maybe 10, 7-point game. Okay. I, I, like, I like the Kansas pick. I'm still deciding between Kansas, and not too many people understand this, this pick, but Kansas and Iowa State. Georgia's Niang has been playing outstanding basketball as we've seen it as they played as they played Georgia State earlier this season. And Nas Long, if he keeps shooting like he's shooting, then it's going to be a good, good, good Big 12 championship. So in the Big Ten, who do we have coming out of there? The Big Ten, I'm going to go with the tall physical guys at Wisconsin. Um, they're very fundamental. They have three guys who are high con con contributing scorers. Um, they, they really run the court well, and actually I think they can really compete with Kentucky. They can give Kentucky a lot of problems. The thing is, they're just not as athletic as Kentucky, but I like Wisconsin in that. I like Wisconsin coming out of there too. Wisconsin is a very physical team. Kaminsky's playing the lights out. Sam Decker is kind of trying, is starting to find his own. The only problem I have with Wisconsin, if they get sped up in the, in the Big Ten tournament, I'm not sure how they're going to fare out, but they fared pretty well this season. In the last team, the SEC. Kentucky so far is 32-0, and zero, looking to run the table across the board, become the first undefeated team since Indiana. 
Who do you have coming out of the SEC? SEC, I'm going to go Our with number one team, of course, in the country, the Kentucky Wildcats. And also, I'm going to pick the LSU Tigers. I think the Tigers is one of the teams that can give them the most problems. They're just as long, but the only problem is, is they don't have the they don't have the depth in their bench. They have a good they have a good starting five. But the key thing is for them is can they keep up with Kentucky throughout the whole game? Athle they're athletic, they're long, and they're rangy, but I don't know if they can withstand with them even on a neutral court. But I'm going to go, of course, with the Kentucky Wildcats, maybe 15-plus. Well, I like LSU. LSU has held you know, the Wildcats. They play some great games at home and in Rupp Arena. But I think I'm going to have to go with the hometown team on this one, UGA. UGA is going to come deep. UGA, they're going to be playing at the Georgia Dome. And I say UGA will play Kentucky in the SEC Championship. However, they will not beat Kentucky in the SEC Championship. I'm sorry to say that. And last but not least, the Sun Belt Championship. Who do you have winning that? Uh, Sun Belt Championship is very interesting. Um, I think the Georgia State Panthers will make it to the championship. However, I think people are little are starting to go a little sleep on maybe um, University of Louisiana Monroe and Lafayette. Lafayette is still a great team who has great postmen, but I don't think I think Georgia State might come out of the championship with their great guard play. But the key factor will be Curtis Washington. I'm going to pick Curtis Washington over Lafayette in their post play, uh, maybe 10 to 15 point game. Over Sean Long? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. I like how you call me sir as well, thank you. <laughs> but yes, I'm gonna to have to go with that as well. I believe Georgia State will come out of the Sun Belt Championship. They do, one thing, have a problem finishing games. So I am concerned about that. But I'm gonna go with the sleeper team, the team that nobody expects. Not UL Monroe and not Georgia Southern. I think I'm gonna to have to go with UL Lafayette as my team that may also come out of the Sun Belt Championship as well. They won it last year, they went to the postseason, so they know how it feels. Jared, thank you for your time. No problem, see you later, Marcus. No that's going to conclude another episode of Primetime Sports. For the latest in GSU sports news, you know where to follow us on Twitter. I'll remind you again at Prime Sports. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at Primetime Sports with a Z. Until next week, Panthers. Next week? What do you mean? Spring break, mate. Oh, spring oh, yeah. break coming up. I've been hibernated for three weeks in the gym. Yeah. Trying to get to 290 by spring break. Got the guns going. All right, stop showing off. Aww. Until next time, Panthers. Homer here and Marcus. Maybe. Signing out from primetime. Unless spring break gets too hectic.